Whew. How's everybody doing? Uh, I hope you're excited to do uh, tonight's show, and I hope you brought your silver bullets and your silver daggers. It's going to be an interesting night tonight, guys. Uh, we got a lot of information tonight to cover. I'm going to go over some uh, personal encounters. Uh, Kirk is going to have some personal encounters tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about how these things get around, uh, potentially. And, you know, some other things, how they may travel. But before we get tonight uh, started off, uh, hello, Shell. Uh, hello, Sharon. Hello, Sheldon. Uh, a lot of people in here tonight. Life, Eddie, Jim, Angela, Dana, Shell. It's good to see all you guys. Uh, Shell, uh, if you want, send me. I think we did speak to you already. Never mind. Um what we're going to do is um, we're going to start off tonight, but I want to say that we do have a member drop video next Thursday. So if you're not a member of the channel and you want to see the member drop video, you'll have to be a member to be able to see the video drop on Thursday. I believe it takes it 12 hours to recognize you as a member once you join. Um, another thing I was wanting to go over with you all tonight is we have a lady here in Oklahoma that's contacted me. We may be doing some investigational stuff at her house. We may even try to get her on the show. Uh, she is having uh, encounters right now as we speak. I'm going to go ahead and bring Kirk in. We've got some other things that we're going to want to talk about. And uh, some future guests is going to be coming on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring Kirk on. Are you there, Mike? I can hear you. Hello. Hello. But I have no video. Uh, let me try to reboot this. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, what what we're doing, guys, is uh, we got a, a lot of guests coming up. Uh, we have one guest that's going to come up. This Thursday is going to be a live that we don't normally do. Thursday, we have a lady that's going to be coming on the show. Uh, she's having some uh, cryptic encounters. Uh, she's had them when she was a child and um, she moved away and then she moved back to the home place and she's now having uh, encounters again. So it, she has a lot of good encounters. And another thing, guys, it might really you might really like is she happens to live by another Girl Scout camp. So do kids have anything to do with where these creatures stay? Probably so. Uh I wouldn't be surprised, but um, I'd like to invite everybody right now. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, reach down, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost a thing. It helps support the channel, put the algorithm out. Some people that have been subscribed have been removed. They don't know how they was removed and they've had to resubscribe. So if you'd like to subscribe, we would like to uh, invite you to reach down, subscribe, ring the bell, select all so you'll get all of our latest content. Uh, other than that, uh, Kirk's going to be coming on here just momentarily, just as soon as we can get Kirk up and going and uh, the technical issues that he's having right now. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about tonight. We're going to uh, talk about somebody special, and I guess you all probably uh, know who we're going to talk about tonight. And we want to show, you know, some respect, and um, she she deserves a lot of respect. And I'm going to wait for Kirk before I do that, just because Kirk was a friend of hers and was in contact with her so i am going to wait for kirk before i get into that um I'm trying to think if there was anything else that i needed to drop to you guys i don't think so i've got a lot of notes down we've got a lot to talk about tonight for the show um the show no doubt is going to be good tonight we're going to go deep into some subjects uh we may end up getting kicked off the web again tonight. I don't know. It's possible. But um, we're, we're going to talk about it anyways because of some things that we did want to, we do want to talk about. And uh, me and Kirk discussed it, and we are we are going to talk about it. So, uh, so far, so good on our end. Hopefully, Kirk is getting his stuff wrapped out. He's been having some difficulties with his internet. He found out that his neighbors were still in his internet. So um, hopefully he's getting that under control. Uh, if you all have any questions while we're waiting on Kurt, if you want to post them in capital letters, I'll try to catch you and answer them real quick before we start the show. Um, 
do my best anyways. Oh, we did have a something new came up tonight, guys. I thought y'all would want to know. I got it on my phone right here. Uh, I hope I'm not mispronouncing this, but uh, a Bigfoot warning has been issued in Taos County. So it's actually trending right now. Uh, it's not on a uh, it's not on a fake website, but there was a Bigfoot warning has been issued, and they said that it will be updated. So that's going to be something pretty interesting to uh, to keep our eyes on. There's something possibly developing that may have happened. So uh, we'll find out uh, and see what happened there. I'm definitely keeping my eye on that one. Uh, I know there's been a lot of them put out in the past. It ended up being uh, jokes and. Uh, things like that but this one here is uh, actually been carried by a uh, credible news uh john let's see here um uh, john doe i have only watched scott carpenter one time i watched the video where he uh had the uh, alleged portal that happened behind him uh, that's the only video that i've watched i've had people send it to me want me to look at it and um, I looked at it and wanted my opinion on it. Um, hey, Wendy. Good to see you in here. Uh, Wendy's one of our moderators. Uh, again, we're still waiting on Kurt to come in. Bonds and Booth Parnell Podcast. Yeah. Sovereign Cosmic Wild Man, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, there is no telling what's going on right now, for sure. Uh, something's going on enough that it caught the, the news enough that they're posting it. And uh, there's going to be an update to it. So we're staying on the update. Hopefully, we'll find out uh, more about that. Hey, Lori. Hey, Tracy. Uh, I'm actually going to be going to a boots on the ground. Uh, I'm not sure if this lady, I'm going to be talking to her, if she's actually having Bigfoot or if it's dog men, but um, she's asked me to come to her house and um, I want to go to her house and see if I can find anything. It, it will be a boots on the ground. I will share it. Uh, let's see. Life 1042. Thank you for the $5. The BDRP Supernatural YouTube channel. He said Claudia actually told him years ago they were going to kill her. You know, um, that's what we're going to get into tonight. Uh, I don't have a lot of information on that Life 1042. Uh, Kirk is going to be the... Uh, here, let me throw you back up here. Kirk looks like he's trying to get back into the feed. And I will let him address that. He's going to have more information on her personal life. As Kirk and her uh, were friends. So, hopefully... This is going to let Kirk in, and uh, we're going to be able to uh, to talk to Kirk is what I'm hoping. I see him trying to come into the feed right now, and he will be the one to ask. I don't know if it's going to load him in. Hey, Shell, I'm not sure which... Uh, which video you're referring to? Um, I have thousands of videos that's been sent to me. I mean, my my email is totally just full of emails. You'll be surprised how many emails I look at in a day. Um, so you'll have to refresh my mind. I've been on uh, numerous conference calls today, setting up uh, lives that are coming up. Uh, we have a lot coming up, a lot of things coming up. Uh, there we got Kurt. Looks like Kurt's going to get in now. Okay. For some reason, StreamYard keeps bopping off. And when I try to sign back in, it says, oops, something happened. So we'll see how long this lasts. 
we're sure something happened, aren't we? Yeah. All right, Kirk. I was waiting uh, for you to join because I told him you're going to have more personal information uh, with Claudia. I have not seen <laughs> Claudia. Uh, Life1042 asked this question, and I want to direct it to you. Yes, she did tell some people that I've known, I had known her since 2010, 2011, maybe. Uh, she was a dear friend of mine for a while. There was, shall we say, a slight falling out over a misunderstanding. And everything kind of just, we didn't talk for about a year. Then it was slowly we got to talking again. And then when she... At one point in time, her house was actually surrounded by four dog men. She was basically held captive in her house. She called me. Very, shall we say, upset, but not hysterical. In the sense of acting crazy, she was worried. Ah. Uh, The girl has had probably 150 to 200 different experiences throughout her life with both Dogman and Bigfoot. For the vast majority of them, they were not what you would say good, but not what you were say, would say bad. Being trapped in your house for four days is a bad one. Afterwards, after they were gone, after she was able to get back out, after her husband, whatever, got back home, he had been away somewhere. After he got home, he didn't believe her. He felt that it was a psychological issue, but That is the same thing she told me, Sovereign Cosmic. Uh, like I say, she had many different encounters, but she also did have a few health issues. Now, and this is hard for me, guys, because she was a dear friend. Uh, point blank, the love of her life was her two daughters. <sighs> One of the biggest fears she had in life was being homeless and not having a place for her and her daughters. Because, of course, we did start becoming friends when her daughters were still younger. Uh, she is just just a wonderful person. You know, she had the initial Bigfoot encounter with her daughters out in California. Nobody wanted to believe her. Everybody tried to convince her it was a bear. It was no damn bear. I can tell you that right now. This girl described to a T a 10 foot tall Four and a half foot wide at the shoulder, four foot thick chest, big foot. And two eight footers standing off to the side watching. It was no bear, I can tell you that. And when she sued the Parks Department for disclosure, a judge out there decided, sure, it's a bear, dismissed the case. Well, Claudia was never one to drop something when she thought she was in the right. And Claudia damn sure thought she was in the right on this one. Uh,
Looks like Kirk froze up for a second on my end, guys. Uh, I don't know if he's having uh, storms at his location. He may be having storms. Uh, as y'all can tell, uh, Kirk was very good friends with her. They spoke many times. Um, you know, hopefully he'll be able to, to rejoin us and uh, be able to finish his story about Claudia. I've done a lot of reading about Claudia and uh, man, she done so much work, so much. Uh, she was such an influence in the, in the cryptic world. And um, I, I done a video on her. It was a while back. And the video that I'd done on her at the time, she was, battling on this court case that she was working on and she had filed the court case and they told her that they wasn't going to hear it unless she changed from Sasquatch or Bigfoot to something else and I don't blame her from what I've read about her she was very stern and very strong in her way and she said no I'm not going to change what it was it is what it is. And she continued to pursue her lawsuit. And as she continued her lawsuit, it eventually did make it to the judge. And the judge, unfortunately, he dismissed it and called it a bear. Um, you know, there's a lot of rumors that go around where people you know, speculate <clears throat> that the the judge may have been involved or the judge may be part of the cover-up. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll never know, but um, there's a lot of speculation that he was part of the, part of the cover-up. And um, she was pushing her, uh, her belief very hard. And she was pushing it uh, in a court of law. And whenever you start putting things out there, people believe sometimes that um, certain people will try to make you be quiet. Um, it's evident that she did not uh, break or she did not uh, fear she continued to push her beliefs um, yeah uh, you know what Dana affliction says people get threatened I mean I, I, I received a phone call and I've been threatened for uh, one of the videos I done I done a video on it if y'all would like to see it it's in my videos it's a picture of a phone I think it says I received a phone call and I explain everything and what happened in that phone call it was a, it was a very strange phone call it was trying to get me to follow a different route than the route that i was pursuing and what i was investigating and what i believe i like her I, I didn't change what i was looking at or how i was looking at it i continued and continue to this day to say what i believe and i think that it's very very interesting because I listened to a little bit of uh, Josh Turner last night on Paranormal Roundtable and I noticed that me and him have an almost exact view of these creatures you know he he believes they've been here a long time and he believes that our government has captured them took the DNA and they created these super soldiers and I, I would believe the same thing I believe that they were here and that they were captured and it, that it happened but looks like uh, Kirk's made it back with us. I'm going to let him continue uh, talking about Miss Claudia. And uh, hopefully we won't have any more technical issues. Uh, he's, ha no, he's having trouble. He just got disconnected. Uh, you know, you can't go away from what you believe because people are threatening you, you know, threatening you. Uh, it's not, it's, it's dangerous to do what we do. It's dangerous when you go against the narrative. Uh, but sometimes 
you have to go against the crowd to find the truth. If we all followed the crowd, well, we would all have the same opinion. We would all have the same, you know, hypothesis, and we wouldn't get anywhere because we would all be following the same line. And um, you, you just can't go nowhere like that. I want to bring Kirk in. It looks like he's back, and we'll let him finish with Claudia, guys. I, I thank you for your understanding. Guys, I don't know what is going on. StreamYard keeps booting me off. Uh, I keep freezing up. <clears throat> don't know what it's all about. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes. Okay. Okay, people, as I said, Claudia was a very wonderful lady. She was very dedicated. Her number one goal out of all of this was, was to get it out to the people, the truth. She just wanted the people to know the truth about what these things are, that they are out there, that they can hurt you. And that's all she cared about. She wasn't looking for fame. She wasn't looking for fortune. I mean, she spent her own money doing her research. She didn't ask anybody for anything. She was just a wonderful, wonderful person. You know, <laughs> we, we was talking about also, she... Um, she didn't back down from her belief and she didn't change her no. narrative. And not at said, all. That says a whole lot about who she is. She had a lot of integrity. Very, very yep. brave lady. Very brave lady. Um, yes, she was. And I hear a lot of I hear a lot of people out there that say that this is some kind of conspiracy that she was murdered for it. I also hear a lot of people out there that say, well, she was just a lady with problems and the problems caught up with her. And quite frankly, I will 100% guarantee you that the lady did not commit suicide. I will go to my grave believing that. Uh, did somebody help her along the way with her death? I don't know. I don't know that there's any way we're ever going to know. But I'm confident in what I do know about her and it. Wild man, you're exactly right. She was genuinely down to earth, was simple and just willing to just wanting to educate everybody about what this is and you know uh there is a lot of conspiracies and rumors going around the internet about her about you know her cod or cause of death and uh right it's too, it's too early right now to speculate on anything and i think that if we do that and remembering her tonight then we we take away from what she stood for and right Kirk and I, we, we decided tonight that we wanted to remember her and give her credit on her investigations and remember her life and that she was trying to do what every investigator is trying to do. She was trying to educate and show people what was out there and how to be careful. And they're not your friend. And I think that it was obvious that they was not her friend either, uh, you know, she had some really bad encounters. I mean, I, I, I don't know her anywhere close to what Kurt knows her. I uh, done a video on her here a while back. And through the reading and everything that I found, this lady was probably, and I'm probably going to catch slack on this, but I'm going to say probably the most boots on the ground, educated investigator that I've probably read about. And uh you know she we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh life thank you here in australia we have an island continent we don't have wolves dogman wolf uh, demon nephilim are bred by the u.s government and released all over the world including here in australia and africa 
Life 1042. I read a document. <clears throat> Me and Kirk actually discussed this the other day. I'll have to excuse my uh, allergies tonight, guys. They are tearing me up. We had that rain and the mold is crazy. Uh, there was a letter written from an overseas country. And they actually asked the United States government, please stop releasing your super soldiers over here. They are not just attacking the enemy. They are attacking our soldiers also. That went before the Congress. Yep. And I'll leave that at that because I, I know what happens when we go down that road. But uh, there is definitely a program. Now, Miss Claudia, <clears throat> she wasn't only attacked, Kirk, if, correct me if I'm wrong, by the media and by other investigators. Uh, she was attacked by the creatures that she studied. Yep. Yes, she was. Uh, she did at least on two separate occasions get attacked by him once she was hit in the head. Uh, it actually knocked her unconscious. She said she was unconscious for about 45 minutes out in the woods. She says, to the best of her knowledge, nothing happened during that time, but she doesn't know. You know, uh, <clears throat> I've had, you've seen the large rock thrown at me in the one video. If that rock would have hit me, I'm sure I would have been out too. I don't know that they were trying to kill me, but what we do know is people do go missing that are never found. We know people that right. go missing that are found that are deceased. And we know that children go missing and sometimes they're found deceased and sometimes they're found alive. So, you know, we're, we're, we're still learning. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the time she got sick, Kirk, whenever she was throwing up blood when she was hit by the Empress. That's what I was about to say. She 100% credit of that to being hit by Empress Sound. She said her entire guts, and this is a direct, direct quote, her entire guts felt like they were ripped out of her, turned inside out, and pushed back in. And, and I know this is going to come up. I've seen it go down the feed, Kirk. And we want to touch on this softly. And I'm going to let you touch on it because, again, you have more information on it than what I do. People suspect... I want to put this carefully. And there has been some people allege that her boyfriend, Ed, may possibly be involved and or covering up something that he may be aware of, which is all speculative. Mike, I can't hear you. Ah. Okay. Uh, Okay, there you're back. Let me, and, let me try. Let me, uh, is that better? Yeah. Okay, in relation, in respect to that question or that statement, rather, yes, I have heard that also. I've actually had a lot of people call me that said the same thing now. I would hate to think that anybody that knew her would be involved in doing any harm to her. Is it possible? I don't know. Maybe. You know, I would never say that he did it. I would never say the government did it. I would never say anybody did it until there's some proof you know everything else is just speculative you know uh they they uh, said that in one of her encounters that um she was particularly afraid of one of the males 
that had followed her, her home in California. Now, the way well, the way she spoke, she said that she was afraid of all of them. They were not to be trusted. They were dangerous. But there was one particular right. male that she seemed to really uh, talk about from what I was reading. And she seemed very afraid of this male. And she believed that this male <laughs> was the one that did cause her with the stomach issues that she had. And um, she believed that it was out to get her. No, she believed it was out to take her. Okay. Yeah, she, she was convinced that this one alpha male wanted her, I don't know for what particular reason, but she said, it's going to take me. I'll never be seen again. Now, thank God it didn't. And I really don't know because she never elaborated what gave her that feeling. Whether it be the way it stalked her or whatever, but, you know, she really, in her heart, believed that that male was going to take her. And we do know there are cases of so many people come up missing, and we don't know why. Uh Isla Wren asked, is it the alpha that hit her with the infra infrasound? From what I read, that she believed it was the alpha male. She, she thought that it was, yes. That is correct. Hey, Glenn, good to see you. It's been a while. Glad to have you back. There. Hey, Glenn. Uh, you know, she sounded to me in a lot of the readings that I read about she had so much knowledge and with all of the knowledge that she had it was almost like she was reaching out for help um i've seen where a lot of people have said that they tried to blame mental issues on her and right i've read about her i've read what she said the video that she produced and in my <sighs> My unprofessional opinion, and it's an opinion, if you're on to something really, really good, what is the best way to discredit somebody? It's to make you got them it. Look like they're not believable. And, you got it. And now and if, after her death, excuse me, now after her death, they're doing damage control by discrediting her. And, you know, everybody knows in every courtroom when you go to court, the main, the main purpose of the prosecutor is to attack your yep. actual, your, your, your morals, your integrity, and to make you appear to be unbelievable. And if right. they can even, you know, get a perjury on you, that is gold. They, they, they go after your integrity and... It just tells me how right she was as hard as they went after her. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's no doubt she was 100% correct in everything that she stated. And I guess, unfortunately, she did not put out a lot of the information that she had. There was so much more she had that she could have released. But some of that she felt was just too far out there for the average person to even be able to comprehend. Uh, hell, some of it, even the Bigfoot community, she thought the majority would not believe. So she kind of kept a lot of that bottled up. And there was other rumors that have been uh, circling the web. And uh, we'll, we'll address that. Some people said that uh, she was found deceased in the floor, deceased in her chair, and then deceased in her bed. I, I think right. it's too, too early right now to know unless somebody has actually spoke to a family member. Uh, well, and here's the issue with that. I actually have spoke with a family member, and 
first she was told one thing, then she was told another thing. Uh, then she told me to go ahead and talk to Ed. Ed would know better because he was the closest thing to a spouse that she had. But yet Ed was out of town when it happened. Ed was out of town when the police got there and found the body. So all he can go by was exactly what they told him. And Ed also said he was yeah. the one that, that sent somebody to do the welfare check, right? Right. Right. And as I told you, there were at least two people that called to get them to go do a welfare check. Right. Do you know anything about her being on dialysis, Kurt? Yes, yeah, she was at one point for a little while. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the disease that she had or sickness, rather, I shall say, that she had, and it was affecting her kidneys. Um, and there again, that she blamed on him for sound. Hey, let's, uh, let's, let's move on from her house in California. She, uh, she moved away from there because she was somewhat under siege. Was she, she was under siege by these creatures at that point? She, she, she moved away. She moved away because of the amount of experiences, shall we say, that she was having. Uh, very much hoped Tennessee would be a new start, that she would not be encountering these the way that they were out there. Um, and for the first several months that she was in Tennessee, she was right. But after about two to three months, it seemed that lo and behold, they're back again, 2000 miles east of where they were, but they're back bothering her again. And that's actually going to be part of our show tonight when we kick it off. And um, I'm yeah. also going to uh, share some personal stories tonight that me and Kurt, and Kurt's going to get his first chance to ask me questions about my personal encounters. And I thought you all would enjoy that. Uh, I'm going to share an encounter tonight that I have never shared. Uh, I was young, 13, and uh, I think you all is going to enjoy it. Kurt knows a little bit about what I'm going to share. And I think, I think they'll enjoy that one a lot. Adam, they both scared the holy hell out of her. She agreed with me on the fact that some of them, they're not your friends, but some of them may tolerate you. But then there's always going to be that one that you'll never even see coming, and it'll just snatch your head off or snatch you up and you're gone. You know, I, that's, that's a perfect word, a perfect word. They, uh, they tolerate us. Yeah. I, th I think that's perfect. Um, you know, I was telling everybody paranormal round table, you know, he said the other night that he believed that they were always here, which is in line with our belief and that they have been yeah. caught and then super soldiers made from their DNA and other transformations. And I, I agree with Josh on that. I, that's exactly uh, a lot of my research and where it comes from is they were always here. Um, yep. And, you know, just like uh, Sovereign Cosmic says, you know, exactly. They tolerate because they hate humanity, actually. And, you know, the if you think about it, and this is all speculative, but if these creatures came from the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the demons, the bloodline and everything, of course they hate us. We were the biggest slap in their face was the creation of us, man. And women. Yep. I mean, it means both, but to make sure I don't offend anybody, yeah. men, men and women. Uh, it, uh, you know, it, it was the biggest slap in their face because, see, they don't have a chance to go to heaven. They're done. Their, their fate. Exactly. Sealed. They're sealed. Now, us, we fall short of the glory every day. But because Christ loved us, we have a way. And they hate us a lot for that. And I'm sure the hate is deeper than we can probably even fathom in our heart. 
but luckily we have a we we, we had a savior that went to the cross that yep. shed his blood and he gave us away and thank god for that that's right um well, Kirk, if there's anything you'd like to add about Miss Claudia, I don't want to beat her into the ground or anything tonight. I uh, just no, just like I said, keep her children in your prayers. Yeah, they're still having a hard time dealing with this. I'm sure. I mean, I haven't been able to talk to either one, but I just can't imagine losing my mother at that young an age so keep them in your prayers please yeah god god bless you guys um, i'm sorry for the pain that you're going through but just remember your mom is a hero she was brave and she will always be remembered and That's even though right. i never i never got to meet her i uh i was i felt privileged to even to be able to read her work so our thoughts and prayers are with you guys Moving on, <clears throat> we're going to talk about some things tonight, and um, one of the things we're going to talk about is how do these, I guess I should re rephrase it, what, what, what is one of our opinions of how do these creatures move around the United States, or how do they move around any country, really, and how is it when people get rid of these creatures they end up back at your house so fast we have a theory yes we do and kirk i know and you're looking at this and this is yours i'm gonna let you kick this off okay guys i'm gonna actually let you in on what my theory is, and it is based on what some people have seen. You know, the railroads run all across the country, run in different directions, have basically nobody monitoring them. We all know that bums can jump on the railroad, ride the rails to wherever. Well, we very much believe that the dogmen are doing the same and your bums, hobos, whatever you want to call them, they not only are doing it, but when they're doing it and the dog man is doing it, they become a nice little snack for the dog man. You know, meals it's like a meal served on, yeah, exactly, meals on wheels. <laughs> now, what do I base that theory on? Well, Mike, would you like me to go ahead and go into the encounter that happened up just outside Monroe last year? Yeah, yeah, let's go into that. Okay. Just outside Monroe, Michigan, two friends were going out camping and fishing. They're, of course, city boys for the most part. Monroe, Michigan is a pretty busy city. So they go out to this one area outside of the city. And as the one victim described it to me, we were down pretty well just a back road. And there was a set of train tracks, and then just the other side of the train tracks, there was a stream that they wanted to fish in. So they got to where it looked like it was probably nobody's land that would care. And in reality, it was railroad land that they were on. They went ahead, pulled off the road, set up camp. They were maybe 250, 300 feet from the road and they were about 150 foot from the railroad tracks. Now they did know that they would have to cross the railroad tracks to go ahead and fish in the morning, but they were okay with that. Okay, the reason, one of the reasons they picked this spot was they 
thought that it was a little used set of tracks. So they may only get one or two trains a night. They thought they'd be okay with that. Barbie, you're near Flint, Michigan. Okay, then you probably know the area that I'm talking about. Anyways, so they went ahead and set up camp. They actually had waited till they got off work to leave. So by the time they got to this campsite, this area, it was not really dark, but just starting to get dusk. So they went ahead. They decided there was no fishing tonight. They set up their camp. They started cooking. Uh, a train came by. And they're kind of watching the train, you know. Well, what do you think jumped off that train? Something big. It landed on all fours. It got up on two legs. He said it was about seven to seven and a half foot tall. It was, had its nose up in the air, sniffing the air, much like a dog does. Then it kind of put its head down, turned it side to side as if it was looking to figure out where the scent of whatever it was came from. At that point in time, it seemed to notice them, and it started coming right at them. <sighs> the thing actually took off running right dead at them. They didn't have really time to react. It jumped on one guy. The other guy, scared to death, but not knowing what to to do, picked up a log and started beating on it. Well, at the time he picked up that log and started beating on it, it jumped off the first guy and started to chase him because he started to run. It, of course, got him, had him down on the ground. Well, the first guy that was down on the ground had a buoy knife with him. I believe he said the brand was a buck knife. Uh, he hobbled over as fast as he could and started stabbing this thing in the back while it was on his buddy. He said it let out a hell of a shrill, the first stab. The second stab, it arched its back. It got up, started to come at him, and... The one that was just on the ground was able to get up and grab the log that he had, and he started hitting it in the back right where it was stabbed. And when he hit it the second time, it went down. It hit the ground, and it gave them just enough time to go ahead and get to the car. It was coming at them as they were trying to start the car. They, of course, peeled out of there. They left everything there. Didn't bother, you know, through no time there. Just as he put it, a werewolf was attacking us. They could care less about their camping gear. They made it to the hospital. Both of them had a lot of bruises and contusions, scratches, when they got in the emergency room, they were looked at, triage, decided, yeah, they needed to go back pretty much right away. The one guy, he actually had a fractured collarbone out of it. But uh, anyways, they take him back, doctors asking them what happened, and they're, they don't know what to say. You know, what can you say? I was attacked by a werewolf. Doctor's not going to believe it. But they went ahead and said it. Well, at that time, the doctor called in the police. Uh, 
there was, quote, mental health issues there raised now. And the police, when they look at the wounds, called in game control, which was just a fancy word for the dog catcher. Dog catcher came and looked at him, said, no, nope, this ain't dog. Called the game warden. Game warden come in. It's a bear. You guys were attacked by a bear. And like the one man said, Bears don't ride railroad cars. Bears don't run at you on two feet. Bears don't tackle you like they're an NFL lineman. He said, this thing was trying to kill us, trying to eat us. Well, one man was single, had no relatives up there. The other man was married. They, the hospital let the married guy go home and they warned his wife that, you know, he's evidently been traumatized and may be having a mental health issue. The guy that did not have any family, they put him in a 72 hour psych hold. Now they released him after the 72 hours, but you know, they can ruin your life. And again, they <clears throat> they discredit you. That seems yeah. to be the you know the the thing. Method that they, of operation. Yeah. You know, you always attack the witness. Always attack the witness. Yeah. Um, you know. <clears throat> and you know the. That was two witnesses that actually watched this thing jump off a railroad car. What more do you need to say? That was evidence right there that they do ride it. And you know, you got officials that haven't even seen it, haven't even studied it or collected information. And the first thing they say, well, that's a bear. It's got to be a bear. Yeah. Yeah. Bears get blamed for so damn much that they don't do. In a way, I feel sorry for them. Yeah, I'm surprised we even have bears left around because they get so much. Yeah, exactly. Surprised people haven't hunted them to extinction. Exactly. Uh, You know, these things, uh, we was talking about how they will follow you home. Um, before before I get to that part, there has been a lot of reports lately of homeless people and people riding the rails coming up missing. Yep. And me and Kurt talked about this today. Mr. Stephen King. Yeah. He was trying to warn us. Everybody knows where he's from. He's from Maine. You had the Palmyra incident in Maine. Maine has a lot of werewolf encounters up in Maine. Yep. Yep. You know, he he writes the book Silver Bullet. But not only does he write the book Silver Bullet, the movie starts out on the railways. Yep. Um, You know... Was he trying to tell us that that preacher werewolf came in on the railway and then inf- infiltrated its way into into their little town? You know, some of these movies, some of these books, I have to really wonder if, even though they're written as fictional, if there isn't a lot of truth to them but that they know. Um, You know, a lot of people say, and I'm not going to go into what another channel made a mistake about tonight that I've talked to you about. But but what I I am going to say is 
you know, my mom when she was 13, a young little, a young, young girl walking up to Granny's to the front porch. You know, we, we knew Bigfoot was there. We, we knew this. There was not a doubt Bigfoot was there. But Granny, I, I love her to death. I miss her so much. She was so smart. But Granny would always tell us there are other things out there that are worse. Yep. And, you know, she knew there was worse things outside than Bigfoot. And one of the worst things I honestly believe, I've changed my mind on Dogman and Werewolf. I've told Kirk a million times, I don't like those names because I've never caught one. I've never touched one. So what I want to say is a bipedal canine. A, bi a, a bipedal canine creature was at my granny's. And mom said she saw it looking over the steps at her. And I've asked her a hundred times what I look like. And she said, nothing I've ever seen looks exactly like what it looked like. But the closest thing that I've ever seen was the movie Silver Bullet. And she said, it, in Silver Bullet, it's not when the werewolf is completely transformed. It's not where it's transforming. But at the end where it's killed, and it's in between the man and the wolf with the snout, that's the closest. And there's a lot of people out there. I'm very sure that if you ran into this thing in the dark looking like that, well, if it chased you, it would probably be slipping. Because, yeah. I mean, this, this thing is terrible. And, and that brings me back even to where a lot, you know, there, <laughs> there, was, there, was, this, there was this guy. And um, he was a friend of the family. And... You know, in every in every town, school, college, every, there's always the bad boy, the guy that beats everybody up, the tough guy. You know. Well, we had one of those too, and he came down to my granny's house. He was going to take care of this thing, you know. He thought it was a just a, a pervert, you know, a, a, a pervert, right? And Granny right. tried to tell him, you don't want to go outside and see what this thing is. Oh, he'd laugh, you know, I, I, I can take care of that. Okay, so he comes down one night, he's sitting on the couch, starts scratching at the back door, trying to come in the back door, jumps up, runs out the front door, around to the back of the house, you know. Then he comes right back and he falls on the couch. And Granny said he was as white as his t-shirt. And they asked him what happened. Wouldn't say a word. Wouldn't hardly even imagine talk. that. She said he was soaked in sweat. He was shaking so bad he could barely light his cigarette. And he got up and he went outside and he got in his car and he left. He uh, never talked about that for 50 years, Kurt. My family, his friends, everybody asked him, what did you see? He would not talk about it. Okay. Not uncommon. He got sick. And it's just been a few years ago. He wrote me a letter. I read the letter on my channel. It's called 50 Years Later, if you all would like to watch the video. It's when I first started. Uh, he said when he went around the corner of that house, he said there was a werewolf standing there. And it was grabbing Granny's scraps that she would dump out for the dogs after dinner. We had a, uh, a hog feeding trough. If a lot of you don't know what a hog trough is, it's just a big metal half tubular thing with <coughs> dividers down it and she would just dump it out the back door into that because grandpa would be logging and he didn't want her outside running around he told her just dump it off the porch that way you're not outside in the dark right. 
Well, he walks out there, and as he comes around the corner, ready to whoop this bully, there stands, he said, about a nine, ten foot werewolf. It's grabbing the scraps with its hand, and it's shoving them in the side of its mouth. Not in the front of its mouth, in the side of its mouth. And he says it has long claws, its hands are soaked in the scraps, and it's just eating like a, you know, like a slop hog, right? It turns its head because it's sideways to him, so it kind of turns and tilts its head kind of looking back at him. It smiles or growls. Some people believe it's a growl. Some people believe it's a smile. And it says, hello. He ran back to the house as fast as he could, he said. For 50 years, he could not fish no more. He never went back to the woods. Never. He was an avid hunter and fisherman. He was the person people in town went to that asked, where are the fish biting? What do you use to catch them? Will you help with the, you know, with the volunteer fire department fish fry? Will you help? He stopped. Stopped everything. Nobody stops their life of that unless something very, very terrible happened. He never went yeah. back. In fact, he sold his house that was on the suburbs and moved to a city. God, I couldn't do that. So no he, way in hell. Frida, yes, they can. I've never heard them speak yeah. a, sentence, a sentence, but I have heard them say words, singular words. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's singular it. words they can mock they can mimic any sound even a bell ringing yep um he uh he wouldn't even talk about it he said it changed his whole life you know this guy no doubt he served in vietnam And he said, what I walked up on at the back of that house, he said, I'd been to hell in Vietnam. That's what he said. I've been to hell in Vietnam. But he said, I saw one of its residents that night. That thing lives there. He said, I just visited it. Yep. So, it, you know, it's... <clears throat> You don't want to put, you know, you don't want to feed to where food is going to be left out for long periods of a time. At a time, uh, I believe that if food lays out there, like any animal, I mean, raccoons, possums, armadillos, uh, you know, they'll all come to your house if you leave food out. And I've done that because I've been lazy at times. I'll dump stuff out, you know, in a short walk or whatever. And, you end up with coons and possums all night, and your dog's out there barking and carrying them around and fighting them under the house. And, but it also draws other things. When you start drawing these yeah. other animals in, you're bringing a food source in. Right. And predators, they're going to take the easiest thing they can get because they don't want to get injured in the sure. wild because a small injury in That's the wild, right. that means you could be the next dinner. can be fatal. Yes. Yep. Dollhouse. You're probably right. Uh, and I really don't know anybody that has seen one and it is still the same as they were before they saw it. It does change you. You know, it's a. And then, you know, whenever the when when the gifting stops. They don't. Right. This isn't something that you can just gift for a while and get photographs of and then think I'm going to stop feeding it and I got my proof. Yeah, no, it don't work that way. 
eventually, I think, I won't even say eventually, Kirk. You tell me what you think. I think probably even the first time they see you, you're always on the menu. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you definitely are. You know, uh, I don't think it's because you stopped gifting them you're on the menu. I think you're always on the menu. They just talk. You're always on the menu. You're just, yeah. You're a useful fool yeah, is the best to, way to put it. They're going to eat you. They're going to ride the gravy train. Literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they like to mimic babies crying, women screaming, to lure men into the woods. It's in men's DNA. Correct. To protect women and children, monsters know that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know, Life 1042, if you saw the video, sorry, that little werewolf dog barking at something. Um, I don't know if you have seen the video. Uh, I had a baby crying in the woods in one of my videos when I was alone. If you haven't seen it, Life 1042, I'd recommend you see it. That was one of my best vocals I've ever caught. And it was scary. No doubt it was scary. Uh, you know, uh, I think Kirk had that examined, didn't you, Kirk? Why don't you tell him? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, and it came back 100% not human. The unknown creature. It was compared against 242,000 known sounds, and it didn't match a single one. That was forensically done by a man that does forensic examination for the FBI. And I remember what Kirk told me after he got that done. He called me, and he said, well... Don't ever go back there. You can't say the exact words. Yeah. yeah, I can't say the exact words. But he told me, don't ever go back there. Uh, right. Yeah, Barbie, that's true. They, they put up with you until, you know, you, you cross the line. Um, we have a guest coming on Thursday night, and I hope you all don't miss the Thursday night guest. Uh, she's got a lot of information, and um, I, I know it's going to be a huge show. Me and Kurt can't wait to even listen to her. Uh, right. Was, they're asking me, what was that video called? Uh, I cannot think of the name of that video. I know it had like a dark picture on the front. I think it might have been like, it tried to get me, maybe, or something like that. It tried to get me tonight or ambush me tonight. I don't remember. Something like that. Uh, I will try to find that after the show. Uh, if you're in our Facebook, let me know if you're in the Facebook. If you are, I'll post the link to it in the Facebook. Uh, Kirk, you had a story about a lady that was gifting, and when she stopped gifting, what had happened? Well, let's start with number one, doesn't end good. Do not gift. Okay, that's the best thing I'm going to say. <laughs> People just, just don't gift, please. There's, like I said, too many people go missing. Too many people are injured. They blame it on bears. They blame it on dogs. They blame it on wild uh, cougars. But the long and short of it is, no, it's cryptids. Don't gift. It's the same thing that I was trying to tell this lady. And point blank, she told me why I've been doing this for years. Okay, you've been doing it for years. Have you ever stopped? No. What happens if you get sick? Well, they'll take care of me. Nah, they won't. Well, it actually did happen. She got sick. She was not able to feed them. Uh, to 
make a long story short, we don't quite know where she ever ended up. Just hasn't been found again. There hasn't been found since she went missing. You know, you fool with these creatures. They're not good. They're not your friend. They're not nice. They tolerate us only because we are their last chance food source. And I Barbie, think, don't know, feed anything. And I think when we go to the woods and stuff, the reason we don't have a, a large number of killings is because they're intelligent enough to know that if they start slaughtering us, that, that they're going to be hunted. Um, right. You know, a, a lady just asked, uh, she said, what happened to the, Miss Perez said, Mike, what happened to the, the voice you heard at the bridge? Um, Kirk and I went over that voice. And the best we could come up with is it was a disembodied uh, demon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and give you my theory on that real quick. Uh, when you go out into the field and you're searching for cryptids, you're using a lot of different uh, tools, a lot of different technologies. And you're recording, you have your IR. Some people have even better equipment than what I do. And not only are you doing all this, you're in the woods, in the dark, which is not common. You're looking. Sometimes people make, you know, calls trying to get reactions. These disembodied demons, they, they, they know what you're doing. And they're going to use yep. that opportunity to be able to show themselves. They're, they're trying that's to, right. They're trying to scare you. That's, that's the deal. Is they're, they're trying to scare you. And that's why a lot of times whenever I'm out and I will be investigating and these things start happening, like things that I know are paranormal, I know they're not cryptid, I'll just tell it right then, you know, to leave me alone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's gone. I don't have to deal with it no more. And I know what I'm dealing with is cryptid. And I know if it bleeds, <coughs> an engine can only leak so much oil before it stops running. So, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, that's the way I look at it. Life 1042, uh, thank you again for another $10. Uh, in order to mimic a sound, you must hear it before. How do monsters know the sound of a newborn human baby crying and human women screaming blood-curdling screams like they are being murdered? Well, you know, that's a good question, but I believe because of the fact that they do go around houses so much, they actually hear these things. They encounter these things. And I'm sure that they probably sit back, stand back, and watch the reactions that happen to them. Uh, especially with the blood-curdling screams of a woman. And then they see a big response. You know, that would be my best guess. You know, and I think to even take it even further, that's a good question you had. Uh, be careful when you're outside with your children. Um, if your kids are outside playing, you yell their name. Watch them. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely watch them. But um, watch them. Don't do this at your kids and stuff a lot. Like, and the reason I say that, my little cousin was playing in the backyard. And my aunt was real bad about going like this with her hand telling her to come in. She come running in the back door one night. and She said, Mom, 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 something's trying to get me to come into the field. They look out the back door. This is daytime. This isn't nighttime. There's a hairy hand sticking out of the brush of Granny's field doing this. The same motion that my aunt would do to try to get her kids to come inside. Yep. They're mimicking. Yep. And that's scary as hell. Um, you know, yes, it is. You know, they're, they're trying to get your kids to come here, and they're using the same techniques. Now, imagine that creature, say say the little girl's name is Tracy, which it's not. I'm just making a name up. And say it gets that name down, and now it can stand out in the grass and go, Tracy, what's a 10-year-old? Yeah, that's... 
what's a 10 year old going to do? Yeah. Or an eight year old, they're you know, right, right more than it. likely they're exactly, they're going to go right to it and then they're just going to disappear. Um, uh, the Jakey says they're using gestures or voices to provide comfort, not caution. I believe it's not comfort or caution. I believe it is a lure. No. Yeah, it is a lure. Um, Frida says, Mike, it's a pity you couldn't have gotten all these stories from your granny before she passed. Your dad, before he passed, he would have had told you that is. Do you have all of your mom's stories? Actually, Frida, I have all the stories. Um, I have all my aunt's stories, my granny's stories, my grandpa's stories. I can even take it further than that. I have all the elder stories of the town of the 1800s before it was flooded, moved, and what had happened afterwards. So, yeah, I have it all. Um, and it's going to be in the book. <laughs> so you're not missing anything, I promise. Uh, I made sure to get all of that. Life again, 1042 says, what about the blood curdling screams of their victims being eaten alive? Could that teach them? Like in the movie Predator, it mimics its victims. Um, yeah, it wow. could. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's stories of, remember the guy that was getting ate alive? And they ran out there and they thought they saw that guy. And they thought he yeah. was eating something. And when they ran out there, it was actually something else eating him. It was just wearing his face. Yep. You it know? was wearing his face. It's not a good thing. Uh, like I said, these creatures are smart. Uh, have you ever heard of a dog man being scared of a human? No. No. Yes. And it's not scared. They are leery of humans because I think it's they're afraid of being hunted. So that's why they limit their interaction with humans to what they do. They know if they kill too many of us, we're coming after them. You know, uh, that day I was out with the boys, you know, in that video, if y'all haven't seen it, to where the dog men stood up and scared my nephew and my son to death. There's no doubt in my mind that day that if they would have rushed us, they would have got us. Uh, yeah. I had a 45 on me. I had 13 rounds in it. I had an extra magazine on me. But you have to consider the speed at which they would be moving, how many of them there was. And they're not going to come at you in a straight line. They're going to circle you. Uh, I agree with Kurt. He said that day they weren't there to hurt me. They were there to make us no. leave. Um, yep. They, they they never left the tree line. They stayed in the in you know in and amongst the tree line, but they paralleled us all the way to the vehicle, and they made sure. That yeah, they we were escorting you out. Yes. Yeah. They, they they made sure that we knew they were bipedal. They uh, stayed bipedal. They would reach up and grab the limbs and shake the limbs as they would walk down the tree line. And whenever we got in the vehicle, we looked out the back window of my truck. Of course, on my truck, I had a rifle, so the odds had changed then when I got to my truck. And uh, I, gra <laughs> I, I grabbed my rifle. And just like they came out, they dropped down to all fours and ran off into the yep. woods like a pack of dogs. They were happy we had got in the vehicle. Yeah, that's all they wanted was you gone. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't want us there. Uh, it it was scary. Uh, you know, I just I know in my mind that if they would have wanted me that night, that day, or the kids, I probably wouldn't have been able to stop them all. Uh, no, you wouldn't have. Would I took a few with me? I'd like to think so. Um, but th when you got your kids with you, taking a few with you, that's not enough ever. That's yeah, it's not a good trade off. No. Uh, you know, me and Kaylee, 
and I'm trying to get her back on the show to talk about this. Uh, Good. Remember, we was on our we called it daylight in, darkness out videos that we were doing for a while. Me and Kaylee stood about 15, 20 feet from a dog man. Kaylee looked it in the eyes. And if you remember, that was one of her last videos that she done. Yep. Yep. It stepped from behind the tree. I was standing, I seen it first and I'm like, Kaylee, Kaylee, look, 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 look right there. Look, because I seen it. It steps right out. And I'm a little ways from Kaylee. I'm probably 10, 12 feet from her. And I run up the embankment to get a better view of it. I actually ran at it. So I ran up the embankment. And when I did, it stepped behind the tree. And it looks from behind the tree and turns its head at me. And Kaylee's still watching it. But it's not watching me. And I'm closer to it. It's still watching Kaylee. And it knows that I'm coming at it. It's still watching Kaylee. And Bad. It was fixated. Yep. And I think that there's a possibility oh. after that night that Kaylee may be marked now because of that incident. Yep. And yeah, that question's for you, Kurt. Ah, uh, how far away from Delaware? I'm all the way to the western edge, southwestern edge of Pennsylvania, where Pennsylvania comes together with West Virginia. Uh, Carolina girl, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. <sighs> yeah. Me, yeah. This is a good... Mark, this is a good this is a good live tonight. I like this. We're getting into the deep stuff. Yeah. Um, my mom, out of the eight kids down there, all the visitors that would come to my granny's, they were a very well-liked family. People, my, my granny's house was a place where you was never an outsider. When you Yeah, came, everybody was welcome. Yes. The coffee was on. There was always something on the stove that was warm. She had the warmer on. If it was potatoes, green beans, if it was a soup, there was always something to eat that you shared with the neighbors or the kids that came over. Um, always a pie or a cake on the table. Um, my mom, out of all the kids, she uh, was the one that walked up on it when she was so young at the porch we just talked about. After that happened, for some reason, it was fixated on my mom. All the kids would yeah. go outside during the day to do their chores, and my mom would have to go out to the building, milk the cow, bring the, bring the milk back to the house. It didn't bother the other kids. It would stalk my mom in the tall grass. She could hear it breathing, snorting, yeah. growling. She would run, it would run, she'd walk, it would walk. Um, it would do it to her all the time. So they got to the point to where they, they, they couldn't even let my mom be alone. Even as my mom became an adult, the same thing happened with us kids growing up. It followed my mom to our house, and we had hell with it at our house. My mom, into her 40s and 50s, took care of her mom when she had a stroke, along with her other sisters. Now, when the other sisters were there at night, it was bad. It, uh, you know, it would be bad. But when my mom was there, that's when it would hit the windows. It would hit the door, try the doorknobs. It would let out this, man, I don't even like to call it a howl. I call it a scream. It was like a, a deep voice, but in a roar scream. It was enough that, I mean... It hurt your ears. You could feel it inside you, but it was not high pitched like a woman. It was like a like a deep scream, and it was hell. Even to this day, when I take my mom fishing down there, we have encounters. Uh, my mom was hit by a large rock a year ago, smashed her in the side of the ankle, missed my head on a video, and dented the side of my truck in. I don't know why she's marked. I don't know why they do that. But uh, they—that's that, what they do. And if, Kirk, if you have any theories on that, maybe you 
but I don't know why they do that. I really don't either. Um, I had an old Cherokee woman once tell me that I was marked. That that was when I was about 10 years old. Hadn't had a Bigfoot encounter yet. She didn't know about the gnome situation. But she just looked at me and said, you're marked. Kind of quite telling, kind of upsetting in a way because I had no clue what she meant. A 10, 10 year old kid, you're marked. Hell, I didn't have any idea. And when I was 18, had the first Bigfoot sighting. And since then, these things, they've never left me alone. You know, no, they're not here all the time, but just about the time you leave your, leave your guard down, go out to do something, gee, you hear something, you know what it is. It's not supposed to be here. You hear a growl that sounds like, oh, the volume of a lion's roar. But yet, I'm in Pennsylvania. There's no damn African lion here. But yet, it doesn't sound like a lion's roar. It's just the volume of it. It is a dog's growl. You know, I talked to Kirk about this today. Um, if I can get this guy to come on the show, I'm going to try my damnedest to get him to come on the show. Uh, Troll Bridge, the bridge that I go to and that I do a lot of a lot of my investigations at, it's a uh, it's a bad place. It's a uh, they say yeah. it has bad bad juju is what they say. Um, I spoke to a guy today. He called me on the phone. And what happened to him at this bridge is terrible. Uh, in one of my videos, I believe it's called It Tried to Hurt Me. I went underneath this bridge and a rock landed behind me, just missing me, a large rock. And everybody said in the video the size of this rock that it had to be been something pretty strong to have thrown it as far as it flew. And it didn't come in straight. It came in down. <coughs> launched up uh i heard talking in the video i heard walking in the video and i couldn't see anything well this guy reached out to me and i spoke to him today and i i told kirk about it i'm trying to get yeah. him to come on, trying to get him to come on the show i don't know if he will if he does i'm very sure it will be anonymously uh he yeah was a, he was attacked at this bridge as a teenager in the 50s and it wasn't a Bigfoot. It wasn't a dog man. It was little men with red beards. And he said they were dressed like lumberjacks, pretty much. One of them had a pouch on. That the strap would go over one shoulder and the pouch was on the other. And he was down there. He was catching crawdads for his dad to go fishing. And they circled him. They were up on the higher bank. And they circled him. And he didn't think really much about it at first. He said he did notice that they were small, that they were little people, you know. But he did, he wasn't really afraid because he didn't think nothing about it until they started walking up on him. And he said they started laughing and giggling and hitting each other and shoving each other. And they were getting pretty rambunctious amongst themselves. And whenever he tried to get away, he tried to run, they had already circled him. And they all grabbed him by his legs and took him to the ground. They drug him to a big rock underneath the bridge. And they held him down. If you have kids in the room, you may want to remove them. Yeah. Uh, he said they held him down. And they uh, had a club like deal. And on the club, we have uh, shells down here. Some people call them seashells, whatever. They're not seashells. We have fresh water, but they're big shells. And we have them in our lake. 
and a lot of people collect them. Well, uh, they held him down, and they had this club with this shell on the end tied on it, and they removed his testicles. They put them in their bag. The one put it in his bag, he said. And the guy's crying on the phone while I talk to him. Very upset. Um, to the point to where he can hardly talk. He's hard to understand. Uh, they take it. And then they place the mud out of the creek and the sand on him. I guess to stop the bleeding. And they ran off. This guy to this day will not go back to the woods. He can't have children. He said they took everything away from me. And the bad thing was whenever he went and told his dad and everybody what had happened back then, they didn't believe it. His dad thought that he had went. Nobody out. believed him. No. They thought that he tried to crawl over a barbed wire fence because there was a place down there where they were told not to go. Because there was a lumber yard there, and they would all go play in there in the rock quarry and all in the lumber yard. That they thought he had got hung up on the fence and had done it. The parents would never believe him. He uh, said, why are they done that? was probably because they're evil. But he said, why they kept them? He had no reason. He said, I don't know why they would do that. Um. He said, people go in the woods all the time and they joke and they laugh and they hunt these things because they think it's fun. He said, let me tell you, it's not fun when they really do find you and they hold you down and they do that to you. He said, because by the time I got to my mom and dad's, he said, I was so white that I was getting where I couldn't feel my legs. I couldn't move my arms. All the blood in my extremities was gone. They almost killed him. And his only question was, why did they take them? Yep. Because they're evil little... <sighs> right. They're evil. Right. And uh, Peter says, Mike, do you have family ancestors that were part of the flooded town? Maybe the cryptids missing your mom related occurrence that took place. And Yeah, my whole family lived in the flooded town in the 1800s. They were uh, moved up to the new town. <laughs> oh no Heather says I, I look and sound crazy okay I don't know why I would look and sound crazy but I'm uh, just passing on information yeah why they would do that um, one person I seen said witchcraft probably maybe uh, I mean I don't know I exactly, know. turquoise. Yeah, I mean, you've got to believe your children. Uh, you know, if he would have been older, probably an older adult, would they have tried to do that? Probably not. Uh, that's good, Adam. That's great. Uh, you know, Wonderful. They, they seen a teenager kid and I, and I would say they probably wasn't even uh, they probably wasn't even hunting him. they probably just came upon him I would say right you know um, and because they're evil it was something for them to get their kicks with She said, no, no, the parents to the boy. The place where I live is cursed by the natives, and it's uphill from the flooded town. The place where I live is cursed by the natives, and it's up from the flooded town. She's got to be close to you, Mike. Yeah, where, where do you live, Heather? Not exactly where do you live. What? Let's start out with what state. <sighs> uh you know, the, the guy on the phone even made a joke, and he's like, I don't know, maybe they took it to make a magic pouch out of or a coin purse or something, he said. He said, I just want to know why they took it. You know, he said, 
He said, I know it doesn't make sense, but he said it just it's weird to him. Dollhouse, uh, quite frankly, it may be. Curses are absolutely real. Yes, the Bible does state it. <laughs> exactly. No, I don't want to drop kick him. I want to flamethrower him. Yeah. Heather says she's on the Ohio River, so she's she's nowhere close to me. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. Um, Although she may be close to me, depending on where she actually is on the Ohio River. Right. Um. You know, even look here, even like you know, this one here, like a fraternity hazing. I think yeah. it was. I think it was deeper yeah. than that, though. Don't you think? Yeah, deeper? definitely. Definitely deeper. He's lucky. No, they had a. They had a specific reason that they did it. And and now I told him, I said, "You're you're blessed that they left uh, your other organ, because back in those yep. days, that would have been a slow death. I mean." Yep. You know, I mean, it's just uh, they couldn't do the things back then that they can do now. And uh, Peter said, thank you. Peter, Michael. that's a good choice. Peter, yeah, if you find out anything, Peter, let us know for sure. Uh, you know, they said maybe it was a write up. Uh, sorry. They could have took his life. Yes. They Dana, you are 100% right. They said maybe it was a rite of passage to get from a human to be considered an adult. Uh, I think it was probably more than that. I, I'm, I'm guessing they either uh, they probably either made a spell from it, or they ate it to gain his youth, or probably something like that. Um, e either way, whatever happened, he didn't deserve that. <coughs> right. And yeah, Barbie, there was definitely more to them just hazing. And you know, we, we know these things are intelligent because when they was at my granny's house, whenever them things were what they did, not only would they beat on the house and stuff, they would laugh at us. Yeah. I mean, and they, they are laugh. an evil laugh. Yes, yes. An unexplainable laugh. I can't even explain it. I've tried. It's like an animalistic, human, evil, sinister... There, there is nothing like it. it it's bad. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a, a hunting trip gone wrong. You know, I mean, no, nobody yeah. deserves that. Uh, nobody does. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell everybody a story. A lot of people talk about dog men, right? And I and I, I, I say like the upright canine creature or whatever. Uh, I lived in a house and I bought a dog from a guy. And my bedroom is on the other end of the house in a mobile home we had bought in a trailer park at the time we was living there. I just got married. And you walk down the hallway and you go into the kitchen, which had a bar that separated the kitchen from the front room. And then there was a bedroom on the other end of the house. Well, we bought a dog. And this dog was like white and it had a little bit of black on it, but it was more like a shepherd looking dog. And I got up and I went to go to the kitchen to get a drink. And this dog is in the front room walking around on his hind legs just walking around and i said what the heck is that thing doing yeah and i walked sure back you down did. The i walked back down the hallway and I, <clears throat> I wake up my wife and i'm like the dog's in the front room walking around like a human she's like no way i said oh yeah so she gets up Sneak down the hallway. He's walking around in there. 
just like a human man he's looking at everything just walking around comfortably walking around and uh long story short i gave him to the neighbors and they were hispanic neighbors they were our friends <laughs> <laughs> Bad thing to do to a friend, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but I gave him to the neighbors because their kids wanted him so bad. So they was like, can we buy that dog? Can we buy that dog? And I was like, you can have that dog. And they're like, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Absolutely. So they, they took the dog. Three days later, I come back home from work. And the dad's like, come here, come here, come here. You know, he meets me at the fence, and he's like, hey, man. They didn't speak English real well. He's like, my dad came over, and we had to get rid of that dog. And I was like, why? He goes, my dad said that dog was possessed. And I said, why did he say that? He goes, because the thing walks on its two legs, and he tried to bite us. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, we took him to the lake and shot him. And they, they took the dog, I guess, and shot him. That's what they said they did. I, I never seen him again. And um, people talk about dog men. And I'm not trying to scare anybody in the chat. But whenever I went and spoke um, to the shaman on the Girl Scout case, they said that... Um, Demons can take over an animal's body without any kind of uh, resistance. They said right. animals can't accept Jesus Christ. And Correct. So that makes me look at animals differently now. Because if that happened once, it scared the hell out of me. And I mean, I love dogs. I have dogs now. And they're, they're my babies. But I guarantee you, one of them comes walking in here on its hind legs again like that, we're going to have issues. It's uh, <laughs> it's not welcomed here, you know. Um, I know I know you can't kill a demon; they're they're eternal. But I can damn sure take its vessel away, you know. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow that in the house. Send it back to hell. Yeah, they, they're just there's no room for that here. Uh, no. There, you know, there, there was a night that um, I was out with a friend, and well, I'll just tell you the whole story. We were sitting outside, and he was talking to my dad, and my dad and him were good friends, and um, I was good friends with him, and we're sitting outside, and he owned cattle across the highway, which was. Uh, about a block away, probably. And then you cross the highway and go into his pasture. And he said, uh, you want to go with me to check on the cows? There's something wrong, you know. So we jump in his truck and we go over and we drive down into his field. And his field's huge. Just, oh, God, it was hundreds of acres. And we're, we're driving down the, the, the field. Right. And there's a pond down at the bottom of the field. We see these glowing eyes that are bipedal. And we only see them for a second, but they kind of run off to the side up to the grass. And we're like, oh, man, do you see that? You know, we're talking about it. And we're like, what the, you know, what was that? You know, he was a deputy at the time. And we're like, what was that? And we're looking. And the next thing we know, the back of the truck, boom, something hits the back of the truck. He's driving a three-quarter ton truck. It slides the back of the truck sideways. And the first thing we both said, cow hit us. It was, you know, it was the bull. And, uh, yeah. That was, you know, but it wasn't. We no, no. That's just what we thought. So we left the pasture with no more, nothing else happened. Drove back to my dad's house and the yard light and all was on. And on the back side of his truck was dented in with a huge handprint. My dad. Was 6'6, 350 pounds. He wore a size 16 wedding ring, okay? When my dad walked over to his truck and put his hand up to that handprint, my dad looked like he had a baby's hand compared to that print. 
it hit that truck so hard it slid the truck. I mean, oh yeah, we didn't, we didn't see it except for the eye shine. But when it hit that truck and slid the back end of that truck with one handprint on that truck, you know how much power is in that? Oh yeah, that's you hit a human like that. It's it, you're you're dead. Yeah, you're instantly dead. I said, they can separate you from your head. You know, just a slap. <laughs> you're dead. You're a dead man. If they so want to. What happened to the guy on now, the toilet? You remember he got slapped in the head? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Shell, very good. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Is there anything you want to add before I jump in? I live. I lived in the basement on several occasions. I'm not sure what she means by that. Uh, I think they're what the significance about is a basement apartment, maybe. Yes, Heather, if you have pictures, me and Kirk would love to look at your pictures. Uh, please do. Please I, email I, them. And if it's okay with you, please write in the email. If it's okay with you, if it's not, it's okay. But give me permission to share them and use them, and we may feature them on an upcoming right. show, You know. And if there's any of you guys in the chat tonight that want to come on our show, share an encounter or anything like that, contact us in the email. The email's scrolling at the bottom of the page right there. Uh, contact us. Me and Kirk would love to have you on. We we're, we will learn more. Oh, right hell now. yes. I love talking to people. I learn so much by talking to people. Yep. Uh, you know, it's just, I love to talk to people about that. Okay. I, yeah, there was a tunnel into our basement when I was, when we lived in that house when I was a kid. Uh, as I said, they had closed the tunnel off, but in doing it, all they did was pile dirt up in front of it in the basement, and that tunnel was still active all the way down to the river. You know, that, what happened to that little boy, and if you think the things under that bridge is known, there's yep. a lot of bad things could have happened to you or your little friend, you know? Yep. Guaranteed. Believe me, I think I think about it more than I want to. Uh, it's almost like these creatures are trying to act like humans the way it eats, trying to say words almost as if it has some human DNA in this. I believe it does. I believe it has female human DNA. Yes, it does. <laughs> Yes, it does. Now, glad you brought that topic up. Yeah, we're going to leave that right there. Kurt's going to, I know you've been wanting to talk about that. Yeah, I know that probably all of you out there are familiar with that the Soviet Union had a super soldier program where they actually tried to breed gorillas with humans. Okay, the U.S. was said to, at the same time, have a super soldier program, but we didn't, none of us have ever had the privy of knowing what they were actually doing. But did people know that Germany had a super soldier program, and it was actually to do with crossing dogs and wolves with humans? that Adolf Hitler's wife, mistress, whatever you want to call Ava Braun, was so into this project that they had an entire team of some of the most important scientists looking into it and trying to make it happen. Now, we all know at the end of World War II, what happened to Germany's scientists? 
The majority of them came over to the U.S. We gave them immunity to their war crimes. And quite frankly, they started working on the same thing that they were over there, only doing it for the U.S. Now, if they were trying to make dog, man, werewolf, whatever you want to call it, bipedal canines, if they were trying to make it now from 1945 to today, we've got 80 years, y'all. There's probably a hell of a lot of progress been made on it if they haven't perfected it. No, there were some that went to Russia. And they probably had a lot of better technology and tools here than what they had where they were at, too. Yep. Uh, Frank Harrington says, what if throwing scraps out, they look at it as gifting, then you stop throwing scraps out. They're going to be mad, or are they not? So I, I'm thinking... Yes, they might, are. She might be in a pickle right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if it's happening to you or if you've done that, but if it is, uh, contact us by email. We'll do everything we can to help you try to yeah. get rid of it. Uh, there, yeah. there is things that you can do. And don't do what the lady done in Alaska. Don't poison it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll get you killed. Yeah. Don't don't that do that. will get you killed. <laughs> oh, here's a question for you. I mean, point. Oh, okay. You'll know that. Every single state in the United States, every single province in Canada, they've been seen all throughout. Central America and South America also. I think they're very, very prominent, aren't they? Yes. And, you know, to a point, they stick to the less populated areas, but that's to a point. And when they do come, they have maybe a specific reason. And it seems like you'll get one or two that'll come to bother somebody or a, a family or whatever. And they will absolutely terrorize you. They will raise hell. They will make your life a living hell. She said we didn't answer what she wanted to no, she said it wasn't the answer she wanted. She said, please don't tell her they're in Florida also. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> well, I know Kirk follows them really closely. He has a lot of information on them. As uh, soon as I told him about the guy that called me today, Kirk said, that's not trolls. He said, I know what that is. Nope. Yep. Yep. Those like were you, gnomes. Like you had no doubt what that was. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> you know, the neighbors, after we got to talking to the neighbors, and I don't know if a lot of you was uh, raised the way that I was raised like this, but we were raised when we were kids that family business was family business you didn't go out and talk about things that happened, you know, on the farm to other people. If granny and grandpa or the adults wanted people to know then they would tell them. And if you opened your that, mouth, right. Uh, an old saying they used to say is I'll tan your hide. And, uh, you knew, <laughs> you know, you knew not to, <laughs> yeah. but you know, but back then also you didn't bother the adults when they spoke either. Like the kids do today. Exactly. You know, you had two adults talking. You waited to be recognized. You didn't run up and hey, hey, yep. hey, hey, hey. You you waited to be recognized. 
if they didn't recognize you within a minute, you went and played. By you walking up there, they knew you wanted to talk to them, and whenever they got free, right. they, would, they would come to you. You know? There you go. There's you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get rid of or kill them? <sighs> Fireworks damn good. Hey, I had a question for you. Uh, whenever you caught that one yeah. on fire and they didn't find it, what do you think happened? Do you think it jumped in the creek and got washed away, or what do you think happened to it? I, I think it made it into the river, but I think its burns were so severe that it died, and the fish in Lake Erie fed on it. Turtles and everything, huh? Yep. Kind of like that old song, Swim Across Turtle Creek. <laughs> no this right here um sovereign uh calls me i've heard the opposite i've heard that will bring them in um i've done a lot no of and they say that will bring them up to you to blow a horn and it depends on which kind of horn you're talking about if you're talking about a car horn It'll scare them off. But if you're talking about a horn, like the biblical horns, there ain't no way you can. Or a them. musical horn. I'm not going to go out there and blow that nowhere. Nope. <laughs> Music has a tendency of bringing all cryptids in. And yeah, you just don't want to do that. I mean, we've gone so far as at times we'll play music when we're out on an investigation. And I'm not going to say it works all the time. I'm going to say it works maybe 30 to 40 percent of the time. Won't be necessarily a long encounter. They'll come in to the edge of the camp area and look at you just to see what the hell that is that they're actually hearing. It's kind of like music soothes said savage beasts. Shelly and Airhorn, maybe you'd scare them off, maybe not. I can tell you this though, I wouldn't want to put my faith in an air horn scaring them off. And also, uh, you got to think about who was the master of music. Satan. And if these are the bloodline that we think they are, I would say they would be very... Of course, they would appreciate it. Yeah, they would be very interested in music or notes yep. or sounds. Yep. Yep. Uh, I want to talk about Brenda Hamilton. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, since we're talking about werewolves, um, I followed that case really hard, and uh, I know you're actually the one that exposed the nine nine one one call. Yeah, uh, a lot of people didn't know that the nine one one call even existed until I made some phone calls, spoke to some uh, contacts that I have, and. Uh, they told me that I needed to speak with the dispatcher. I spoke with the dispatcher. I did. And whenever I spoke to her, she said that they had had a call come in three days prior to Miss Hamilton dying. And it was savage. Uh, I still have questions about that case. But um, three days prior, they had a 911 call come in. And in the 911 call, they had a black bipedal creature walking across the field in the same area that she was attacked and killed him. Right. They received three 911 calls of this creature from three separate people within 15 minutes. Imagine that. The 911 dispatcher took it upon herself 
which they're not supposed to do that. But she took it upon herself, and when she dispatched it out, she dispatched it out as a panther or an animal and said that the people that were calling it in were mislabeled. So guess right. what happens when you do that? And that's quite, that's quite often. And whenever that happens, and what people don't understand is whenever that happens, it no longer becomes a police call. Animal control. Right. Becomes animal control. Therefore, you don't have a record because animal control exactly doesn't do a lot of records. And if, and if they do, it's usually not court worthy. Um, right. Why she would downplay that with that not being her job and not seeing what three, three different people is very believable from three different sources. You know, that's, I, I would even say it's more than reasonable suspicion. I would say that goes into probable cause. Right. Uh, exactly. They downplayed that, and it cost her her life. Um, the ditch that she was killed in, they said the water was up to her neck, but we looked at that ditch, didn't we, Kirk? And yep. it almost looks like that road would have had to have been flooded in order to have had... That road would have had to have been underwater. So there, there's another thing that just doesn't add up. And then they, they talk about, and why for the life of me? In the report, they felt the need to talk about a dead neutral laying in the road. That does not make sense to me because I know that if you go to a car wreck, if you go to a murder, motorcycle accident, pedestrian car accident, whatever, and there's a dead possum laying in the road, you're not going to put that in your report. Why, why did they feel, feel it necessary to write there was a dead neutral there. That's a mystery. Let's play this card. What if it wasn't a Nutra? What if it was a baby something? Yeah. What if the dogs killed whatever killed her's baby? And it attacked Miss Hamilton and killed and her. In retaliation. That's a very good possibility. And, and <laughs> you know, we had this conversation actually today about it. And I really believe that that very very much could be the case. Police also said in the report, Mrs. Hamilton was uncooperative. Most people that are in shock are, or that's been my observation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, yeah, she, she was, yeah, she was walking her dog. It, and it wasn't her dogs. It was dogs that walked with her. In the, in the community. Uh, you know, and I thought, well, maybe these dogs killed whatever this thing was, baby, and it saw the dogs as her pets and attacked her out of retaliation. But even the, the, uh, the one, one of the commissioners, I've I seen him and investigated a little bit today more on it. He still does not believe it was dogs. The commissioner of the town on the commission, he said, no, I it wasn't, you know, he said, I don't believe it was dogs. He said there was something going on here. But whenever you're outvoted by other councilmen, there's nothing you can do. Unfortunately, nope. you don't have to buy the whole lot of land. All you got to do is buy the land around it to keep the, the center of the land quiet. And I'll leave it at that. But that's how, that, that, that's how good it, analogy. That's how it works. You don't have to buy the whole thing to keep yeah. it quiet. You just got to buy the important parts. Uh, 
I guess I should tell my story now. We're coming up on a little over two yeah. hours. Uh, you know we're going to get a lot of questions on this one, so I'll go ahead and start it. This is a personal story, guys, I want to share with you. Um, I haven't ever shared this. It's the first time I'll share it to you guys. Uh, whenever I was younger, about 12 to 13 years old, uh, we would play at my granny's, and uh, it was nothing for all of us and the cousins to get together and have, you know, imaginary games or, you know, to play or whatever. And um, I had a little gun. I don't even know what kind of little gun it was. It was like a, uh, it was a metal gun. The, the magazine removed from it. The the slide worked. It clicked. It wasn't a BB gun or nothing like that. It was just a, a toy gun. And I really loved that right. gun. My mom and dad at the time, they didn't make a lot of money. And we appreciated everything we got. This gun, it, it cost, you know, quite a bit. But uh, I played with that thing every day down there, no matter if it was cowboys and Indians, detectives, you know, whatever. And uh, when we would get done playing, I would take the gun and I would put it in Grandpa's garage. And then I knew where it was at the next time we would all meet and play. Well, there was a day it started to rain. And whenever it rains on a farm, you all know that you have to run and you got to put feed up. You got to move lawnmowers. You got to cover engines. There's a lot of things you have to do. And I forgot and left my gun laying on the propane tank. And the propane tank was my horse. I always pretended like the propane tank was my horse and I rode the horse. Well, I left it laying there. The next day, I wake up and I remember what I had done. And I was so sad. So my cousin's like, it ain't no big deal. So we, we made, you know, guns out of tree, tree limbs, whatever we could find, an old broken hammer handle, whatever. About three weeks had passed, and my cousin got the idea that we was going to sneak down to Swingin' Bridge. We had never been there. We knew that my older cousins had been there. We'd never been there, but we'd heard them talk about it, so we was pretty sure that we knew our way. So we tried to find our way down. There. Pretty sure. Yeah, we were pretty sure. We'd never been there. And you gotta you gotta think this is all all woods and you have real thick thickets of persimmon trees and you have rolling hills and middle of nowhere. And we, we decide that we're gonna go down there and we're gonna find Swing and Bridge. We took off, it was probably two o'clock in the day. And we got lost and we didn't know where we were at. And, um, we started like, you know, getting a little, a little panicky, it, it, you know, whenever you get lost in the woods, you, uh, everything looks the same. You start looking around, but nothing looks different. Everything looks the same. And we kept walking thinking we was, you know, we're surely going to come across something we're going to recognize, you know, and be able to go home. And we were, we were afraid, we were scared, and we was even making, you know, little comments about, well, if we don't find our way home, you know, at least we have persimmons to eat tonight. And we can make a fire or whatever, you know. And we didn't want to because we knew that, you know, there was shit around. And we wanted to go home. And uh, so we're trying to find right. our way out of there. And we come across in a real thick thicket of persimmon trees, a little cabin. I guess I'll call it a cabin. It was probably 10 feet wide, 12 feet long. We opened the door on it and went inside to see what was in there. It's in the middle of nowhere. Inside is a bunch of different things. Kind of like maybe where a kid would have played. There was hammers. There was screwdrivers. There was a Raggedy Ann doll and a Garbage Pail Kid there. Uh, cabbage Patch dolls. There was a, a broken tricycle. There was little army men laying all over the, the desk in there. Different toys. And we thought it was an old house, an old farm place. Somebody left their stuff out there. And uh, was getting ready to leave. And sorry about that was getting ready to leave and you know the things that you wash your hands in the old days that had the 
the pitcher set in it, and you'd take the pitcher, you'd pour the water into the to the bowl, and you'd wash your hands. There was one of those sitting over by the door, and we thought my mom would probably like to have that because they collected antiques. So I walked over, and I pick up the the bowl part to see you know if it's broke or or what or what's in the dish the dish and uh, there laid my gun. And I remember saying, I found my gun. And at that time, something started walking up to the to the to the building. And we thought it was a man. And we thought it was a man in a ghillie suit. Because we could right. see, see him walking up. They had like what looked like a ghillie suit on. There was stuff swinging from it when they would walk. Like it was real sw- like swingy. And there was one guy walking straight up and another guy walking from the other way. And we thought it was probably duck hunters coming back. So we took off running because we figured that they were probably mad at us because we was in the building. So we take off running and we're running through all these persimmon trees and over rocks and stuff and we're running up and down these hills up and down valleys and my little cousin's with me he has uh, uh i told you earlier what he had uh, asthma and asthma yeah he got to where he couldn't breathe and was on the top of a hill and me and my cousin were like we're gonna have to stay and fight he couldn't run no more we couldn't leave him wasn't gonna leave him right so, I picked up a big rock and he found a club, my older cousin and my younger cousin's trying to get his breath. And we've been around him all of our life. We knew he was going to be okay. He just would always have to rest. And we hide in right. the grass. and we're all hiding. And we look across to the other, to the other top. And you can see these things walking along the, the ridge over there. The stuff is swinging on them. And we say, God, these guys in ghillie suits, man, they're, they're going to kill us. They're, they're after us. And it was scary. And we, we hid. And then we took off again whenever he got better. And we ran into an old house that was sitting out there in the middle of a field. And we looked into the house and all the walls in this house had been removed. And they were square hay bales in there. In the middle of the square hay bales was like a nest. So we knew we didn't want to hang around there. So we took off. Right. And we got, you know, me and my cousin were together. And he said, hey, look, this old house had an old electric box on the side of it. And the old lines ran up to an old telephone poles that ran, you know, down through the valley. And we said, those have to lead to the highway. Because where I live in my city, we have a huge electric company that supplies everybody. Everybody feeds into the lines that run down the highway because that's the main line. So we followed the main lines all the way to the highway. Luckily, whenever we got there, we ran into a lady that knew us from town. She stopped in her, she was driving a little S10 truck. We jumped in the back and she drove us to Granny's and then we told everybody what had happened. You know, we didn't even get spanked that day. We thought we was going to get our butts tore off because of what we had done. But everybody more, they just held us. They squeezed us and held us. And uh, yeah. we, we learned that day that you didn't go out like that because whatever those were, and I don't believe they were men in ghillie suits now that I've grown up and understand things differently. No, they weren't. We were being hunted. And yep. knowing what I know now from hunting and being in the woods and everything, the only thing that saved us is the wind was blowing in our face. Yeah. The wind was in the wrong direction for them to be able to smell you. If they would have smelled us. Otherwise, you probably would not be here today. Yeah. And we've talked about that a lot. You know, if, if they would have smelled us. They would have circled us, I'm sure. And oh yeah, you know. Just, uh, 
you know, I have one one last story to share about what happened down here. I had a guy contact me, and he said I could share his story. Him and uh, his friends went out, Kirk, and they were fishing. This is this year. They tied their boat to a tree up on shore, and that's what a lot of fishermen around here do. They'll tie off, and they'll fish out of the boat. Right. They're all sitting there half asleep, and the next thing they know, they all get jerked backwards. And the boat is headed toward the shore. They shine their flashlights up to the tree that they're tied to. There is an arm reached around the tree, pulling the rope. Imagine that. They pulled their shotgun out, he said, as semi-automatic. He said they shot three rounds of duck loads up at the, shot, up at the tree. It stopped doing it. And his friend, his friend's name's Curtis, pulled his knife out, cut the rope off. They started the motor and drove to Cut the rope boat. and they got the hell out. Yep, they drove to a whole complete other boat ramp and called his wife to meet him over there. And they waited till daylight to go get his truck and trailer to go pick his boat up at the other boat ramp. Don't blame him at all. No. That's a case where you wish that bird shot would have been double out buck. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Guys, I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight, for hanging out with us. I think we had a really good live tonight. I enjoy every Saturday night. I know Kirk's starting to get uncomfortable, starting to hurt. So do I. Uh, he's he's, he's going to get better. But, guys, remember Claudia Ackley tonight in your prayers and her family and her kids. Uh, remember, you know, that they, they lost their mother and a family member, and a friend, and keep, right. in, you know, keep, a, keep her in your prayer. Uh, go back in. Uh, I need to tell you all this, too. Go back into this live once we end it. Leave a comment, even if it's Mike. It'll help get the algorithm out. Once this closes, they count it as a video then. We would appreciate that very much, guys. If sure. Could, it would mean a lot to us. Uh, but Sure, uh, and ask any questions that you have. Yeah, me, me and Kirk will read them. We'll go through them and read them. We read every question, guys. It might yep. take us it might take us a little while, but we're going to read them. <laughs> like we said the other night, you guys are not a number. We care about each and every one of you. Every on that, one of you. On that, we're going to bid you all a good night. Thank you for joining us. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. Until next time, guys, be safe, and we'll see you next Saturday at 745. Good night, everybody. <laughs>